In part two of the tutorial series on photogrammetry for Blender, we're going to be looking at um, setting up the camera and some projected lights to shoot the scene that we've created with our photogrammetry textures. The first thing I'd like to do though is make sure that we don't lose the orientation and position of our camera because Blam took quite a while, well instantaneously, to set up the camera in just the right position so that it would shoot this frame. So let's add an empty. I'm going to call this empty initial position and I'm going to set it up so that it takes the camera's position and location information. So we'll click on the camera's object information and we'll right click on copy to select it. So now the empty has jumped across to the camera's position. Now still with the empty selected first and then the source the source object selected secondly, we'll right mouse click on and copy to selected the rotation. So now the empty has inherited the empty has inherited the same position and rotation as the camera. So that in future if I ever need to I can get back to this position in space. Let's turn off initial position so that it cannot be accidentally bumped. And we might also set the camera up with a constraint so that it can always come back to this position. So let's go copy location and we'll say initial position. And let's also copy rotation for initial position. Now, if I turn off those constraints and drag my camera away, at any time I can get back there by turning on those constraints. Alright, so now that's the homework taken care of. Now we can proceed to setting up our track for the camera to move along. So let's first of all reset the position in space for our camera. So we're going to do that by pressing Alt key and G key. Oops, turn off the constraints. And we will add a curve to track to. So here's our curve. It's put it in this position where the cursor was. So let's Alt G to clear that position as well. So now both objects, the camera and the curve occur in the same place in space so that their relative to positions to one another is zero. So they both know where each other are. Now if I select the camera and add a further constraint, a follow path constraint, I can select that curve that we just added. Now wherever the curve is in space, the camera can follow it. I'll just clear this keyframe and change the value of the curve position. So it can move along that curve at any point in space. Minus 100 is the beginning position. Now let's select the curve and go into edit mode and select one vertice, the first vertice, and if we press the spacebar, type in hook, we're going to hook to a new object. There we have a new object, a new hook empty. Here it is here. Well, let's rename that. Start hook and edit the the edit the curve again and select select the last vertice and again with space bar and press hook to new object. And guess what? We're going to call this one. In fact, we might re rename the other one to hook start and this empty we're going to call hook end just so they end up in the same place in our list. So now if I turn off the curve edit I can move the hook anywhere without accidentally moving the curve and anywhere the hook moves the curve goes and anywhere the curve goes the camera goes, follows. 
Terrific. So now we have a camera path in our 3D space for our camera to move along. Now there's only one problem with that. As you can see in this view, if I animate the camera along to somewhere else in that position, yes, the camera is now shooting off all over the place because we're not telling it to point inside the volume correctly. So it could end up pointing anywhere off of our textured surface. Well, that's no good. So let's add one more constraint. We'll have to add a targeting constraint. Well, we can't do that unless there's somewhere to point. So let's add a new empty to our space. And this empty we'll call target. Oops, can't spell target. There we go. This time, if I select the camera and add another constraint, I'm going to add a damp track, meaning that I can change the rotation even though it's tracking towards an object. If I select the target and I press minus Z so that the camera is now oriented along its negative Z axis, it's pointing, as you can see, at this empty. So wherever I move the empty, the camera will point. Terrific. So now I can point that down to somewhere that's much safer for the camera so that it doesn't shoot off of our geometry. Much better. See how wherever I move the end of my curve, the camera continues to point. If I go in here, it's a bit more obvious. The camera keeps pointing at our empty. All right, so that's setting up the camera and its track. Now the next thing we want to do is project something onto the surface of this wall. That was the whole point of this exercise anyway. So let's just animate that back a little bit so we can see some more of the wall. The next thing I want to do is add a lamp to our scene. Here's a lamp. We're going to make it a spot lamp. I'm going to rotate it through the x-axis, so R and then X by 90 degrees, so it's pointing up. And I will rotate it around the Z, so R and Z, and point it that way at the wall. Next thing I want to do is actually texture this, the light so that it has a color. So let's go over to the texture panel. We'll add a new texture. It's an image or movie. Could project a movie there, but I'm going to project a still image. Let's open one of these images, uh, this one of yours truly, and project it on the wall. Whoops, that's a world texture. I don't want a world texture, I want a lamp texture. Make sure you pick the right texture. Let's choose the one that I just opened. There we are. Now, if we come down here and change the energy of the lamp, here we are, the energy of the lamp, we can make that picture on the wall much brighter. Another thing we can do is change the blended edge. So this gentle fall off here on the edge of the lamp can be a lot more gradual. Of course, we might have to increase the energy now to compensate. There we are, a nice lamp projected on our wall. And being a lamp, the further away you go, the more diffuse it gets, the closer you get, the tighter and hotter the source. And of course, being a lamp means I'm projecting across surfaces, so I'm also getting distortion on our wall over here, very realistic. So I'll leave that in position, being careful not to shoot off into space, that would be unrealistic. <laughs> um, and the next thing we want to do is change our empty so it's pointing more towards the face. And we simply animate the camera by animating its constraints. So let's click back on the constraint. We'll go back to our start position at minus 100. We'll set a keyframe there so it's at the beginning where the hook is. Uh, not keen on this edge here, so I'm going to move, whoops, not move our camera. That would be silly. I'm going to grab the hook here and move our hook across towards the wall, so we get a raking movement up the wall, and maybe change our empty so we're not shooting off so much. There we go. 
So our target is moved across a little bit, quite a lot it seems. Might move that back towards the wall. And we might move our hook just up a bit closer as well. So I don't have to animate the hook, I just have to put the hook in the end positions that I want. Let's select the camera and move down the timeline somewhat. Animate the camera to zero or final position, put a keyframe on that and move our hook to where we want to end up in space. Whoops, don't move the lamp, move the hook like this. And what, we, what I have found now is I need to move the empty. So what I'll do is create a keyframe for our target, I, location, and I'm going to put that back there, and I'm going to create a new keyframe, so I'm moving my target, create a new keyframe, at location I, so now there is a beginning keyframe, you can see the target move, and an end keyframe, and in between my camera, as you can see here, is raking up along the wall. You can see it moving up along the wall there. And in this view, you can see it landing at that position. Now, if I want to render out this OpenGL view, all I need to do is click on the Only Render button. Don't need World Background, End Key, and deselect everything. There we are. Play it out. And that's what the final effect looks like. It'll loop around. You can see it sliding up along the wall, doing a big 3D move across realistic looking textures, all in OpenGL. And of course, I could animate the movie on the screen as well. Anyway, thanks very much for watching this tutorial on photogrammetry in Blender. Hope you've enjoyed the techniques here. If you really did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.